Bullying is using words or actions to meet certain goals. And again, these goals can be positive and negative in some fashion. Positive and negative for uh, the person demonstrating it, and sometimes positive and negative for the people not, uh, that, that are the victims. It's using words and actions to meet these goals, such as restricting access to resources. Um, so that when kids do things to prevent other kids from using a certain part of the playground, or get involved with you know, taking over the basketball court or other part of the playground, and they kind of look glaringly at other kids, or they get involved with you know, saying, you, know, you can't come over here, getting involved with pushing kids away from there in subtle or unsubtle ways, that may be restricting access to certain, to certain resources. <clears throat> it also can be done to take away resources. It can take away physical resources. It, kids can steal basketballs from one another or different things on the playground. They can take money from one another through bullying. Um, sometimes they can take away uh, the resources of other kids so that bullies can often work on excluding other kids and making sure that they don't have contact with, other, with friends and other social available. Um, they can also, bullying can also be done in retaliation for slights. And so that we do get concerned about kids that have been victims for a number of years because they may eventually turn into bullies themselves because it's happened to them a lot. And some of the more really critical uh, violent episodes that have happened in school settings or related to school settings where kids have met one another are often reactions and retaliations for slights that have happened over the years. Um, and sometimes bullying occurs because it's a response to problems. It is kids that are sometimes not very effective at solving problems who then choose aggression as a way to get out of things um, because they really haven't been able to find another solution. So that, that those, are, those are things. But generally, bullying is considered to be something that involves repetitive words or certainly aggressive and threatening actions. So it's a little bit different than teasing by itself. So we have another different thing to think about with regard to forms of teasing and bullying. Um, there is verbal teasing, and that's <coughs> noting differences, criticizing behavior, and sometimes indicating poor social status. Uh, a general tease is you're a loser, you know, kind of indicating that you have poor social status in this group. <coughs> verbal bullying involves threats, threats of having things happen to you, um, and this can take a couple of different forms. We'll talk about that in a moment. That could be either physical or relationship bullying. Physical bullying is using gestures and physical contact to get control over another person. Uh, but relationship bullying is something that's seen a little bit more consistently with young girls um, in terms of restricting access to other people and using threats to be able to say, if you do this, if you don't wear this, if you do these different kinds of things, you're not going to be part of the group. We're not going to accept you. We're not going to let you be our friend. And this is something that happens uh, quite a bit in in female relationships, a little bit more than in male relationships. Now, the frequency is of concern or false in terms of what we have. This is information that comes from uh, the Health Behavior and School Age Children study that was last done in 2005. It primarily focuses on secondary school kids. There's a limited number of statistics on elementary school children. But this is what, what has happened. Now, this, this is important to keep in mind, however. Uh, because these statistics are probably at the high level. Um, when you do look at things across grade levels, uh, there is not a lot of teasing that occurs in kindergarten, first, and second, and even third grade. It does begin to increase in fourth grade. It increases more in fifth grade, and it gets to be very high in sixth grade and uh, seventh grade. It begins to diminish again in eighth grade, and then goes down through high school. So these statistics are probably pretty indicative of how much it can uh, be present in these things. When we do talk about these kids and reporting the things themselves, they say that in teasing, 54% have said that in the last time period before this survey that they were objects of teasing. So it's fairly common. It's more than one. It's more than, it's a majority of kids. They report that that happens. They do say that they've been social, 51% said that they've been socially teased, indicating again that they've been criticized by somebody and not being allowed to be involved in a certain social group. And electronically, uh, this is in 2005, so it's probably more prominent now, it's happened and been reported by 14% of kids. Again, um, Facebook, um, Twitter, 
uh, text messaging were all things that were not highly prominent in 2005. So that these things are considered to probably be occurring at a higher level. Um, with regard to f bullying that is physical bullying, 21% of kids report that that had happened to them within the last time period. So not the majority of kids, but a fair number of kids. The kids are defining what it means to be physically bullied. Um, and so that the definition was rather broad, indicating both gestures and threats of being physically harmed, as opposed to necessarily 21% of kids saying that they've been beaten up and, and injured, um, that there's been some kind of physical altercation or threat of that. The, um,